here we see the biopsy from the stomach and according to um, uh, clinical information the patient was 69 year old male with uh, hematomesis uh, endoscopy was performed and the clinicians saw polypoid swelling uh, with a small central erosion and they suspected leomyoma. Seven days later after endoscopy the patient suffered from massive bleeding and the emergency gastrectomy was performed and now we are looking for looking at the biopsy uh, from that gastrectomy. So we can recognize the stomach. Uh, on the top here we can identify the <coughs> mucosa um, with muscularis propria and we can see that in the submucosa there is uh, a heavy bleeding. Uh, here we see the muscularis propria. On higher magnification we can have a look at the mucosa which consists of uh, uh, mostly oxyntic glands uh, with parietal cells and chief cells therefore we are looking at the body or fundus of the stomach and the superficial portion of the mucosa uh, should consist of foveolar cells or foveoli and um, <clears throat> this layer is probably eroded so we don't see any foveoli here uh, the mucosa in this part is quite thin so we can suspect uh, erosion however there is no fibrinoid necrosis and there is no uh, severe active inflammation uh, just uh, in a few foci we can see uh, some chronic inflammation which consists of lymphocytes and sometimes plasma cells in this area we see a little bit more lymphocytes also here in the lamina propria of the mucosa we see lymphocytes and some plasma cells on a higher magnification and also hyperemia uh, when we see severe uh, gastric hemorrhage the first diagnosis on our mind is probably some peptic ulcer however as I already mentioned we don't have any fibrinoid necrosis with massive um, acute inflammation so no classical ulcer uh, is seen in this case um, when we see this hemorrhage in the submucosa we can also think about Mallory Weiss syndrome or Mallory Weiss tear however let's pay attention to this structure in the submucosa uh, it's all over all over the specimen you can see it here and that's an artery and this artery is quite quite large voluminous it's tortuous and the wall is quite uniform we don't see any aneurysm uh, maybe in some parts the wall is a little bit thicker but that's probably because of cross-section however also also in this part we can see that uh, the wall of the artery is quite uniform we know that this is an artery because we can recognize three layers. Here we see a slightly hypertrophic intima layer. Here we have the media and also adventitia. If we use the elastic stain, we could probably recognize internal elastic lamina and external elastic lamina. lamina. In some parts here, we can see elastic layer also without stain. It's, it's quite poorly visible, but if we pay attention, we can recognize this very thin elastic layer in here, in the border in between the intimal layer and the medial, medial layer. We don't see any calcification, we don't see severe atherosclerosis, so we can say that this artery is quite normal. We also uh, do not recognize any other uh, irregular or abnormal veins. Endothelial cells are quite normal uh, without any dysplasia or abnormalities. Uh, <clears throat> so together this lesion could be diagnosed as de la foi lesion. And now I'd like to cover some basic facts about de la foi lesion 
and shortly discuss main differential diagnosis. So de la foie lesion is abnormal large tortuous submucosal artery, uh, which typically protruding through the small overlying mucosal defect. It is most commonly localized in the stomach, uh, usually in the fundus or the body, about six centimeters for the gastroesophageal junction, and uh, it is localized commonly um, in the lesser curvature. It can be also seen in duodenum, uh, less commonly in colon and very rarely in the esophagus or jejunum. It is a uncommon cause of recurrent large and potentially life-threatening bleeding and uh, it is considered as developmental malformation rather than degenerative change unlike um, aneurysms, for example. Uh, Dulafoa lesion was first described in 1898 by the French surgeon Dr. Dulafoa. Um, and just a few basic facts about morphology. We can see muscular artery in the superficial submucosa, uh, which is usually from 1 to 5 millimeters in diameter. Um, this artery has normal architecture of the arterial wall and there is no aneurysm. We can identify um, medial hypertrophy. It could be associated with reduplication of internal elastic lamina. However, there is no atherosclerosis, no calcification, no, uh, <clears throat> no vessel abnormality. The submucosa uh, could be widened and there is usually no inflammation farther from the defect unlike in case of peptic ulcer. Uh, dual foie lesion often affects older patients. Uh, the, medial, uh, the median age is uh, around 50 years and uh, it is more common among men. It is quite important to exclude all the other possible diseases that can lead to gastrointestinal bleeding and most of them are much more common than this disease. Um, so, peptic ulcer disease is usually associated with fibrinoid uh, necrosis and with um, active inflammation, which is not present in this case. Gastric antral vascular ectasia, macroscopically described as watermelon stomach, um, looks like um, reactive gastropathy under the microscope. And we can see dilated mucosal capillaries with fibrin thrombi. Mallory-Weiss tear um, is associated with bleeding. However, we don't see any large artery as in this case. Gastric varices affect veins and not arteries and it is typically near the gastroesophageal junction and it is associated with portal hypertension. AV malformation affects both veins and arteries and the blood vessels are irregular, abnormal, thick and thin walled, and not regular as in this case. Angiodysplasia is associated with abnormal arteries but also veins and these blood vessels are localized not only in the submucosa but also in the mucosa. Vasculitis would be associated with fibrinoid necrosis in the blood vessel wall and vascular neoplasm as Kaposi sarcoma or angiosarcoma are commonly associated with dysplastic atypical cells. So that's all about Dilafoa lesion and thanks for watching.